Hello, my name is Sean Quinn. Welcome to the third edition of Heading the Fairways podcast in association with Creative Landscaping in Letterkenny. I am today joined by John Casey, the director of Rosa Pena Hotel and Golf Links. Um, John, you're very welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Sean. Delighted to be here. For those of you uh, who are unaware of where Rosa Pena Golf Resort is, John, um, just give me a little bit of information about the location and a bit of information on how long you've been in business and the history of it. So we're located um, in the Downings, kind of Carry Guard area. We're about 25 miles north of Letterkenny. The original hotel and golf resort opened way back in May 1893, and my family bought it. Uh, my father and mother bought it in April 1981 and took over the hotel. So we just recently kind of um, very quietly celebrated 40 years at Rossapena. So things have changed a lot down through the years. So we're, we're very fortunate that uh, people keep coming and keep traveling to Donegal for holidays and golf holidays. So it's, uh, it helps. Yeah, it's and, and 40 years is a, is a fantastic milestone. And we'll, we'll talk later about the, the growth of uh, the resort over the years. But, it, you know, I suppose if we look at the last, it would be remiss of us not to mention the, the challenges that you've had over the last 12 to now call it really 18 months with COVID. So what's, what issues have you had and how have you overcome them? Yeah, so I suppose um, COVID hit golf pretty hard uh, at, the, at the outset in, in March 2020. Nobody probably thought that golf itself would also close in addition to all the hospitality and businesses. So golf closed at the end of March. So uh, it was a shame, which was kind of an outlet for people, but I suppose the government had to make decisions, make decisions fast. And the hotel not opening was was very strange as well. Uh, we were missing Easter. I think I went for a walk on Tremor Beach on Easter Sunday, which was very strange because it was a very relaxed Easter Sunday because it's normally the busiest day of the year, one of the busiest days of the year in the hotel and, and the golf courses. So very different Easter for us in um, 20, 2020 and, and obviously this year as well. But I think uh, when we opened last year, we opened on the 15th of July. We opened slightly later than we were allowed because the, sh the shuffling dates. We had a very good um, July, August, September. Obviously, we had to close around the 28th of September. But we had a very good kind of, I think it was a 10-week period that we were open. And this year looks very promising as well. We'll open now this day week on Wednesday, the 2nd of June. So it's uh, it's looking good. June will be okay. But July, August, September and early October look very busy. Um, a lot of people interested in coming to play golf and play the three golf courses. So we're, we're looking forward to getting open and getting getting people back to Donegal. That's that's great news, and and I suppose as a, with a pandemic, there there are challenges. Um, has it affected your? I know you're very popular with certain parts of, of Europe and, and players coming over. Has that affected that? Uh, not really. We we're, we do a lot of continental European business, pr primarily from uh, the German market. We work with a couple of great German tour operators, uh, with some golf pros that send a lot of business our way, and it hasn't really the, the, the demands there. And there's a lot of guys still booked to come um, in the later end of this year and a lot of people planning for next year. So uh, I had a kind of a weekly call with my main German tour operator and we just touch base and, and I update him on what's happening here. He updates me on kind of the market and the guys over there. So it's working quite well. Um, obviously not having them here last year, but I think that the appetite's there that we'll see a boom in travel whenever you know, whenever things allow us to, to see that. And I, I wouldn't be overly worried that I think, you know, Donegal being a kind of a remote and, and peaceful destination that's not overrun with traffic or tourists is definitely going to benefit us in the long run in a kind of a post-COVID tourism world. Yeah, and and golf is without doubt the safest uh, sport out there to play in. Um, your your hotel is is due to open on the 2nd of June. Um, I'm sure there has been a very busy period for you. Um, what kind of things have you had to do to have you upgraded the accommodation or what have you done for the reopening? Uh, so really it's just just uh, well obviously the big spring clean happens now but it's it's just really maintaining everything through the winter and um, a lot of there's a lot of painting and decorating and things like that there it wasn't really the winter with restrictions and, and restrictions on building to do any kind of huge upgrades but it's just kind of a maintenance that we do we generally do little bits of work every winter to the hotel but it's just maintenance and uh, general keeping around the hotel and everything in, in tidy and in good shape and just getting ready to open next week. So it's been a quiet winter from that effect. But I suppose, you know, October, November, it looked like things were going to come and go in terms of the, the seriousness of, of the pandemic at the time. And, and it was, you know, in hindsight, it's very good we didn't 
kind of go into a construction project when construction was closed for most of January and February. So uh, no, we just just kept things kind of ticking over and we're ready to go next week. The doors open and hopefully the sun's shining. Well, it, it is a beautiful spot along the North Atlantic shores. Um, you offer first class accommodation along with two and soon to be three fantastic golf courses um, designed by James Braid and Harry Varden. The, the old Tom Morris course is a thing of beauty. Um, with a bit of history as well. T tell me more about, about the course. Yeah, so the old Tom Morris links. So originally, um, Lord Leitrim invited Tom Morris from St Andrews over to lay out a nine-hole course that is near, nearby a state just up in Kerry Guard. And Tom Morris came over and, and looked at the estate, looked at the gardens. I think he may have laid out the course. But then they took a drive and they seen the coastal land, the sand dunes here at Rasapena. And I think that Tom Morris' statement was that this is, this is where to build your golf course. So the golf course was was staked out at the time. It was very much, you know, there was no land moving at the time. It was just staked out, and they put tees and greens along the lower points and fairways where they could go, and the hotel soon followed. So then fast forward maybe 10, 15 years, uh, Harry Varden was invited over to play some challenge matches with James James Braid and some of the other greats at the time, all Tom Ball and, and George Duncan, some of the British Open winners. And Harry Varden and James Braid made some revisions. And then a couple of years later, actually, Harry Colt, was here in 1911 and he made some changes as well and took us into some of the valley holes that we now play as the back end of the old Tom Morris. So it's, it's been an evolving golf course with some of the greats in golf and golf design um, at the turn of, of the 20th century. So we're uh, we're delighted just to have it as it is today and, and to kind of maintain the, the, the standard of golf, golf in Northwest Donegal. Yeah, and, and change is the is the thing that you've um, you've done over a number of years, um, and the course changed probably dramatically in two thousand and nine. I recall years you know years ago playing the the back nine where you crossed over the road. Um, what improvements did you make, and who helped you to reshape the new layout? Yeah, so the original course played across the the main. I suppose the roads were much quieter, and it was laid out at the turn of the twentieth century, but. The original course played across the road in a couple of points, but we we rebuilt and redid what we now play as the front nine of the old Tomaris Links, the Strand nine. And Pat Ruddy laid that out um, back in the mid two thousands, and then we kind of reworked some of the greens with with Tom Doak and Eric Iverson, and had it open for play in two thousand and seven. Oh, sorry, two thousand and nine. So it opened in 09 after we um, made a few. We kind of it was an evolving nine holes, and we decided then we'd stop playing the, the round the back holes, the Coast Guard nine, as we now call it. So we play that as an academy nine hole layout, and we play the the old Tomarises all on the one side of the road. And a question I always like to to ask golfers is, what, what do you think is the toughest hole on the course? Um, the toughest hole, I suppose, the the and the index two on the front nine, number six, can play very tough. Uh, challenging landing area. It's it's not the longest hole in the golf course, but the landing area is quite tough. I find it a difficult hole, but I think everybody finds finds a different hole. You know, it just it's a very very wind dependent here. Um, what's downwind and into the wind, and especially if the wind's coming across from the water. So, but I would say probably the sixth hole in the front line is the toughest toughest hole in the golf course. Yeah, and like any links course, it's all about the wind on the day. If it's a if it's a calm day. You're 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 wondering how come I can hit a, a you know a drive and a nine iron and then the next day you come along and you're you could be hitting two drivers. It's just uh, that's just the beauty of, of golf links. It measures seven thousand in yards, um, and it really is a challenge. Some of the biggest names in golf have experienced the course, um, and and Rory McIlroy being one of those. How did that come about? Yes, we were very fortunate that Rory came and played in our Scratch Cup in two thousand and five, and again in two thousand and seven. So my brother Frank, uh, along with Con Boyce, actually organized the initial few Scratch Cup events that we had. We still play the Scratch Cup to this day with very kind sponsorship from um, Noel McGinley and McGinley Motors. So we invited Rory along to play. Um, in 05, it was a little bit easier. I think he was about 16, 15, 16 years old. But then we got him back again in 07, uh, and just a few weeks before he turned pro and had that very good finish at the Dunhill and got his tour card. So. It was great. And Shane Lowry also played in a few of those scratch cups as well back then. So it's fantastic for us to be able to have those guys here and have the photographs of them playing the course. And Rory won the event in 05, so to have his name on the trophy was it's fantastic. So so it's um, when the autobiography is eventually done, you can uh, you can lay claim to you set Rory McIlroy on his road to success. Yeah, yeah. I remember his father came. His father came in, in 05 and 07 with him. He was a real gentleman. He came back in 07. He was just a really nice guy. He's very complimentary of the whole place. And I mean, 
the amount of places that Rory and his father Jerry had been between 05 and 07, but he always had a great word to say in Ross Penna. I've, I've met him once or twice since, and he's he's just a very nice man. And who's the, is there a course record now on the... Or on, the, on, the old course? on the old course, the course record's actually 66. It's held by Enda Kennedy, Enda from Straban. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't fantastic when we played those early scratch cups. Um, but but Enda, I mean, Enda's round of 66, really. It's five under gross was, was is a fantastic score off the blue tee. It's not the easiest course, even for those top amateurs. It wasn't the easiest golf course either. So the scoring in our scratch cups never, you know, it's never much below par. Yeah, I, I've I've uh, always been over the par situation. <laughs> Never had that. So I, I suppose it, I have to ask you, what is your best score on the course? Uh, oh, it's not, not not great. Maybe one or two over par. It's it's on a very good day. Yeah, you're a real golf. And as going to ask, my next question was: Was that on a good day? Was the weather good that day? The weather was very good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every putt dropped. In uh, so moving on though, in. Um, in 2003, with the assistance of Pat Ruddy, um, you created Sandy Hills, um, a fabulous course that would test any golfer. Um, it measures over, I think it's over 7,300 yards um, from the back sticks. What were your thoughts behind developing a second golf course? Yeah, so, I mean, that was kind of, it opened in 2003, so a lot of the work was done in the, in the mid to late 90s, uh, and that was really my father had the, had the vision on the piece of ground that he bought. Back in 1981, I suppose the land that Sandy Hills is built on was very much a modern golf course that you know needed the modern machinery to move the dirt, move the sand, and create the golf course. So, um, golf really, when 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 my father took over the hotel, golf and golf holidays weren't the same as where they are now. But as things started to develop through the 90s, um, you'll see like obviously the, the K Club I think opened around 91, and then Carton House opened in 2006, and Lock Iron opened maybe sometime shortly after that. So golf and golf resorts in Ireland really became popular and having the two golf courses uh, and two kind of contrasting golf courses in the modern and the traditional really gave us you know a, a great destination and when it takes so long to get here from the airport or from from different other parts of Ireland you know Donegal's very much Downings especially somewhere that you drive to you don't drive past Downings it's it's a you know you you turn in and you turn and you drive back so Having the two options and the two golf courses really kind of allowed us to create ourselves as a destination and get people to travel from all over the world and base themselves here for three, four, five days and play multiple golf courses, multiple rounds. Yeah, and with that, there's a challenge also because from a marketing perspective, you've got to try and attract as many new visitors and keep your name out there. Um, Sandy Hills definitely has, has put you on the map. There's no two ways about that. It's built primarily between uh, sand dunes. What are the, the key features um, of some of the holes on the course? Yeah, so I suppose the, the, the main feature I would say about Sandy Hills to people that haven't seen it or playing for the first time is every hole is almost its own almost stadium you know the first hole you don't see any other holes really the second hole similar you get into the you know four five six you see very little golf from the hole you're playing so it's very immersive in that way that you know whatever golf hole you're on is the only hole you're playing because it's kind of cut in between the dunes so i think that's kind of the beauty of it like you'll very rarely hit a shot in sandy hills and land on another fairway and if you do you've you're, you're very far offline so it's it's very much like that that it's kind of you know, you're on your hole and you're playing your hole and you see very little else of the golf course, which is it's a pretty nice way to play because it, you feel like a lot of the time the golf course could be full, could be very busy, but you feel like you're the only four ball on the course. Yeah, I can concur to that. I haven't played it on numerous occasions. The um, What's the main difference then between Sandy Hills and the old Tom Morris course? So I suppose that the, the feel of the front nine was of the, the old course was trying to you know maintain the feel of the back nine which is the very strong valley holes that you know you play along the ground and the greens at the end of the fairway but sandy hills is different that it's more modern and the more elevated tee boxes you know playing to fairways that right along the crest of the dune to a more elevated tee or sorry elevated green so it's very much a kind of a modern golf course as opposed to the old course which is more low line and more traditional so while you have to land your ball on the greens a lot more in Sandy Hills, you can run it up a lot more on the old Tom Morris link. So I suppose that would be the main kind of, you know, difference between the traditional and the modern, you know, courses that we have. You just heard it there, folks. There's a few tips now when you play the courses. And uh, and uh, and John John Casey, is the it's his fault if it doesn't work for you. Um, it's, it's fair to say then it's there's two amazing courses there and they're bedded into Sheep Havens Bay with, with you know, with phenomenal um, backdrops. Uh, aspire 
experienced golfers uh, and golfers love what they see. Then over two years ago, um, you started a new project on St. Patrick's. So, so tell me why. Yeah, so back in, in, in 2012, we were fortunate that we were able to acquire the St. Patrick's links off, uh, off NAMA. And we, we moved forward a couple of years ago and partnered with Tom Doak to develop what is now the St. Patrick's Lynx. Um, it's, it's just a really, really amazing piece of ground. There was two golf courses there through the 90s and early 2000s. And then there was great foresight to you know bring in Jack Nicholas and develop it and, and, and everything else. But unfortunately, the, the recession and the financial crash of, of 07, 08 kind of caught up at the, at the wrong time. Unfortunately, it kind of went by the wayside as such. We were lucky then that a few years later that it was it was offered for sale and the fact that it bordered our own land it kind of made sense for us to have a look at it and to, to move it forward so we've been lucky to do that and instead of building two golf courses um we decided that the best use of the land in conjunction with tom would have been to create one standalone 18 as opposed to 36 you know one whole 18 golf course big sprawling fairways you know that's the way he's laid it out so it's it's from our walk the other day, Sean, you can attest to that, that it's it's very much like Sandy Hills, that you're on one hole and, and you feel like you're the only people on the golf course because the whole thing's spread, you know, 18 holes across 300 acres. So that's as it is. Yeah, and you just mentioned the designer, uh, Tom Doak. Um, I'm right in saying that he has five of the, five courses of the best 100 in the world. How did you manage to attract a name like him? Yeah, so Tom has he's some he's a fantastic track record on on links on on sandy sites by the sea. Um, our first association with Tom came through a mutual friend, a photographer called Larry Lambrecht, who brought Tom here back in the late two thousands. And uh, as I said, he did a little bit of work on our front nine, and uh, we just kept in touch. And I suppose when we bought it in twenty twelve, Tom was uh, was still very interested. Uh, it's a great opportunity for him. Tom isn't one of the architect. He isn't an architect that designs. You know, his six projects going co-currently, he designs a small amount of golf courses, but they're generally to great acclaim and very, very good sites. So uh, we were very fortunate that he uh, was happy to come and, and work at St. Patrick's and build this golf course. Yeah, so you you, you started, you built the, the greens as the first stage, um, and you can see straight away uh, the thought and detail that's gone into the undulations and the backstops. They, they, they are of uh, championship standard. Um, what are your hopes for St. Patrick's? Yeah, so I mean, it's just just really getting people to to Donegal. It's just another reason to get people to to our part of the world and come and stay here. I mean, if, as long as people come and they enjoy St. Patrick's, enjoy the other golf courses, you know, it's it's all about kind of bringing people to the area, bringing people to Donegal and bringing them to Downings, Carry Garden, having them come stay and see the three golf courses and stay in the area. Really, is 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 our you know long term. It'd be nice to have some some more tournaments. We have our Legends event this year. You know, moving forward, it, it just we have so many options now with three golf courses in a in a fairly concise small area at, at Rossapena. So, it's a uh, yeah. a question for you. I was actually asked this question from uh, from a listener. Um, when you develop a new golf course and and you're ready to go, who actually who agrees the stroke indexes? Yes, that's a, a conversation we we we've, we've had recently. Basically, it's kind of about identifying the. I suppose the two nines are generally split one odds, one even. And then you look at each nine separately and pick the easiest hole and the hardest hole. And generally, you, if you can have some agreement of those there, and then you pick maybe the second easiest and the second hardest, and then just work back from there, and you eventually get to to the index in the middle. So it's uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world without the data of people playing the golf courses. Obviously, we've we've re-indexed both old Tomorrow and Sandy Hills on the basis of the uh, club club V1 data that you would get, you know, after a couple of years of of people playing and. You know, when you change holes, you know, a small way I might build a new tee box. Holes can become a lot easier, a lot harder. But in terms of the new course, it's, it's kind of a changing thing as well. You know, we, we've indexed, we'll index St. Patrick's and, and see how it progresses with some some information on, on play and data from Club B1, etc. or some of the tournaments. Yeah, so some of the, it, it, it may be that some of the, the higher indexes may be slightly reduced as uh, as you get more data, which uh, now I, I, you mentioned there that I had the pleasure of, of walking some of the holes with you this week. And I have to say my my reaction was, wow, it's just it's just breathtaking. It's amazing. Measuring 7,000 uh, yards, the, there's huge greens to play into, erosion bunkers, the backdrop of the sand, the sea, the dunes is, is just amazing. Um, 
It's got championship golf written all over it. However, the middle tees, it becomes a dream for a handicap golfer. Um, tell me why. Yeah, I think it'll be very fair. I mean, the uh, the fairways are very generous. I think uh, I think St. Patrick's a lot of the challenge in being the greens. Um, I think getting to the green in two on a par four won't be the hardest part of it. It'll just be trying to get down in two from there. So it's definitely very, very fair. I mean, from the back tees, it'll measure maybe in and around 7,000 yards, but there'll be a set of tees that six four six five and and with wide fairways where where most people can all hit their driver if they wish then it's definitely very very playable for for all walks of golfer yeah and there there are um there are a number of waste areas which seems to be the new buzz on on golf courses were, were they meticulously designed that way or is it just part of the the, the landscape that you built into the course a lot of that was very much part of the landscape uh, a lot of it was very much which part of the landscape again it was entirely tom's decision as to where the golf course was laid out and rooted and tees and greens and, and he kind of he used a lot of that existing um landscape to his advantage in, in laying out the golf course and we're, we're absolutely delighted with the result and the, the feel and the look it's not not really like anything else in ireland from that point of view that you have a lot of exposed sand and the whole feel and vibe and the wide fairways and the, the really undulating greens is very different to anything else in ireland it's got a real kind of feel of, of that modern Lynx golf course. Um, just just to, as you say, the exposed sand and some of those things. It's it's, it's very different, but it's very, I think people will enjoy it. And one of the signature holes would be uh, the 14th. So uh, just, you know, without seeing a picture of it and vision, and it, just tell us quickly why, you know, why is that such a signature hole? Yeah, well, 14 is the, the hole, the, the southernmost hole on the property, and it's it's, you know, your tee shot takes you right along down the right along the edge of the water, so it's it's pretty spectacular. Uh, it's just a, it's a very nice part of the part of the uh, peninsula and part of the coastline. So it's 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 really really different. You know your your tee shot you hit will hit towards the water and then you'll right angle into the green. So I think people you know need to see it to believe it and enjoy it. And I think they will. I think uh, it'll be a real talking point after the round. I can't wait to see the index that you put on the 16th. It's uh, the view is sensational. You're you're hitting your tee shot um, with the sound of the ocean at the right hand side. Um, a good drive would leave you at well, it depends on how far you drive the ball. The ball, but certainly between 175 and 220. Um, it's a very generous fairway, but your second shot is 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 into a huge green. A four would be a good score there, John, wouldn't it? Four would be a very good score. Yeah, it's a very wide fairway, and it's it's almost play. You feel like you're hitting off the edge of the earth it's so downhill it's so generous to so it's a real hole that you can really stand up and hit the driver as hard as you can and uh as you say sean a very generous green for your second shot so i think it'll play a little bit easier than it looks um at first you know there's a lot of a lot of landing area for your tee shot and a lot of landing area for your second shot so definitely it's it's going to be a, a great golf hole and i think I think people will be more concerned with the views to their to their, their left hand side than they will with the the hole in general. So it's fine. The views are pretty spectacular. Yeah, it, it, it might be forgiven if you hit a bad shot. You, at least you can look around you and say, "Wow, this is just yeah, fabulous!" Yeah. And, and the yeah. golf will only get better. The, the scenery won't change. The golf can change, and yeah. as we both know. When are you hoping to have the course open? Yes, yeah, so the golf course will open for 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 play visitor play from June twenty sixth. So it's only a few weeks now, and. Uh, Hopefully, people people will come and enjoy it through the summer months. Well, you heard it there, folks. The 26th of June, and uh, I have to say, it is a must play. I just want to move quickly on to um, the, the resort as a whole. Um, is it uh, we, we're going back into open competitions at the start of June? Is it your plan to have open competitions for golfers? Uh, we we may. We're not really sure. We'll just see how things kind of progress with the outdoor dining and the facilities. You know, when you don't have the full clubhouse facilities. We're not entirely sure if we, we will have opens immediately, but we'd like to think we'll have opens. We run a very successful open week, um, successful because there's so many people in the area uh, at the start of August, and we should have that on our website in the coming weeks. So hopefully we'll, 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 we'll have our open week in August um, and, and people will come and play just a few weeks before our, our big event with Paul McGinley. Yeah, that's great. And you, when you when I met you earlier this week, you 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 mentioned that you you really proud yourself on being part of the community. Um, you employ up to ninety staff in peak season, um, but you do rely on other facilities within the area, and it's important that you all work together. Tell me more about that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, Rasa Pena is not 
you know, we're not like some of the resorts overseas where you go and you stay in a resort and you immerse yourself in the resort. It's very much about coming to Downing's Cary Garden experience in the, the entire area. I mean, ideally, you'd come here and stay four or five nights and play the three golf courses and but but have a couple of dinners in the hotel and maybe go out. There's some fantastic restaurants locally. There's the, you know, the, the Fisk, obviously, at the Harbour Bar, the Pizzeria, Kieran Sweeney top chef who's from here who worked in dublin for for a long number of years and also in, in england has now taken over at the glen bar and he's, he's an excellent chef it's just really exciting to see what's going to happen there and it's going to be a great addition to us because it's it's getting people here and having them getting them to stay here and getting them to come back is all about their experience of the area it's not really about their experience of the hotel we want them to come and feel like they're coming to downings and, and donegal and not just coming to rossapena you know so it's it's we do a lot of booking of other golf courses for for continental groups and even American groups that are staying in the hotel. And it's all about coming to the area. And, and now with the third golf course, and even before now, we're very keen that people will come and stay in other places in the area. You know, some people like self-catering. Some people want to stay in, in the other hotels. Some people might stay in, in Dunfanaghy or, or Rathmullen. But, you know, we have three golf courses. We have an awful lot of tea times to sell. So it's all about getting them to this part of the, the, the world and, and then everybody benefiting from their visit. Yeah, and, and folks, if, if you haven't been, then uh, 2021 from June is the time to come to Donegal. And uh, we normally have our a uh, bit of a summer in, in May. We didn't have it this year. So I think June, July and August is just going to be um, Costa del Donegal. And uh, it's the it's the best place for golf. And and really, I agree with you, John. Um, three days isn't enough now. I think a week is a, is a perfect time. Come and enjoy what we have hospitality wise. Uh, so it'll be a great experience. Um, I'm 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 going to be joined now. Also coming in today is is Michael McGeady. Um, he was a teaching pro and playing professional at uh, Evolve Golfing. Uh, hello, uh, Michael. How are you? Very well, Sean. How are you? Hello, John. Michael, how are you? You 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 uh, you look like you're a man on the way to work. Or are you coming from work? Or what are you what are you doing I'm there? Actually, I'm between lessons here at the minute, Sean. Um, I've had to come to a quiet place, which is the car. Um, it's very noisy on there. A lot of balls getting dispensed out there, and people having shots. So I just thought I would uh, I come to a quiet place so you could hear me. Very good. Very right, now we'll hear you loud and clear, and you're very welcome. Um, you've been back a few weeks now, uh, Michael. Um, bad habits have returned. Um. Uh, what's the main things that golfers are coming to you? What's what are they trying to fix? Yeah, I suppose um, the sequencing and the the ability to strike the golf ball. A lot of people are sort of really their timings out, and um, I, I would include myself in that as well. Um, definitely, like you know, I'm I'm having a lot of problems with uh, people striking the golf ball, so it's nearly going back to some of the basics and trying to just work on the, on that initial strike and, and the, the centerness of the club face uh, and taking it from there. Yeah. Um, it, it's a very valid point. John, what about yourself? You've come back playing golf like ourselves. You hadn't, you know, I weren't allowed to play for two or three months. Um, what's uh, what, any issues you've had in your game? What do you need fixed or? Uh, it's, it's just it's a, actually just a pleasure to be out i wasn't that worried about what score i was shooting for the first couple of weeks it was just nice to be back in the golf course but i suppose like that now you're kind of beginning to to get a bit more competitive and and as we get into june there'll be some inter-club matches so yeah definitely i think i think everybody's game's a little bit rusty but i think everybody's enjoying it so definitely maybe i should should book in for a lesson and try and get ready for for the summer i, I was actually making a few of those calls to uh for the inter-club and um I think there's a few people need to come and see you, Michael, because they're crying off saying, I'm just I'm just not hitting the ball as well as I should be. I'm doing this wrong and doing that wrong. Um, Michael, a question somebody asked me last week, what is the difference between, say, a scratch golfer and a good club, say, a 12 handicapper? What's the difference? Um, well, generally speaking, you'd probably find that um, the scratch golfer would definitely have a lot more, you know, better coordination than the ability to get the club onto the golf ball much easier um i'm not going to say like and then i suppose they're probably going to be a little bit more productive around the greens but that's not to say i played a lot of 12 handicappers that are, that are a bit of you know very handy around the greens so um yeah i think i think the general difference you could find is, is probably they've, they've come from a sporting background and they've got that the uh, the fundamentals and the movement skills that, that gives them the coordination to hit the golf ball just that little bit more with freedom and not thinking about it so much, you know. 
Yeah, I should have asked you earlier as well, John. What are you playing off? I play off six at the minute. Six handy, oh. yeah. Serious golfer. So this next question actually could be open to both of you at the level of golf that you 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 play and you, and you teach. How chi- how important is actually chipping to your game, and and how much you know how many shots can you actually save? Um, what do you think, yeah. Right. Well, I suppose just fairly recently I've been doing uh, short game lessons there, and um, we done a, we done a little competition uh, at the end of the of, of the session, and it's um, it's a little game called Power Eighteen, which I've learned to, to sort of add onto my I suppose my practice, and the game sort of it adds a little bit of com- the, the competitive element here, so you, it puts pressure on the actual shot and the finishing out of the shot. Um, so I was playing uh, the client that was coming on for the lesson. So I, I took him on and says, right, we'll, we'll play and see how we can do here um, score-wise. Um, so the, the purpose of the game, if you chip the shot you're, and you hold out, it's, it's a par. So it's, it's, it's class as a par, par two, up and down. Um, so we do this nine times, and that's why the game's called par 18. Um, so the idea is to try and obviously get as close to 18 or better if you can. That would be very, very productive. Um, so they, they sort of answer your question. Like this guy's a good player, plays of a sort of mid, he's sort of like he's a mid handicapper as far as like category one, just just coming out of category one and maybe going into category two, sort of six, seven handicap, sort of that, that, that number. Um, not trying to give away too many secrets who he is here because <laughs> he, he won't be happy with me saying this story. But the to answer your question, like he's been he's been playing quite a bit of golf and his game's fairly sharp and. He ended up going around in um, third, 31, no, tw- sorry, tw- 29. He went over in 20, 29. So he didn't get up and en- down enough times where I, I was, uh, I think I was 21. So I was three over for it, which is like, I, I was happy with that. Um, but it really puts an onus or a, um, a bit of pressure into your actual short game. So it's, it's, it's a great way to measure yourself against like a scratch handicapper versus a 12 handicapper yeah my my, my fear is it could be a 36 hole game for me now uh what about your short game john what kind of shape is it in anybody anybody listening to this is going to think it's a setup um uh, my, my <laughs> short game is talking i i won lesson with michael about two or three years ago and it was entirely on chipping I, I i i'm very poor around the greens i'd be very happy to shoot 36 on that uh on that par 18 it's 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 just not very good so um, it's something I need to work on. I'm one of these players that might take the putter from 10 and 10 yards off the green, maybe further just to, to, to get rid of the, you know, to take out the, the element of doubt and the bad chip. So, um, it's, it's an area of my game that needs a little bit of work, Sean. Well, you know where to go if you need the help. It's uh, a little bit like going to the dentist. You don't like to admit you've got the pain until you get there. But, uh, Michael, just, I want to talk about Michael, the golfer, um, Competitions are opening shortly. Um, have you plans to play tournaments this year? Uh, yeah, I do plan to play in the, the Irish region. It's a pro-am circuit throughout Ireland. Um, and it, it certainly is, there's a schedule up there now for those events. And I've been looking and uh, I've been sort of putting a few things into the diary. So I do plan to play a few events. Um, there's actually a challenge for event on this week in, in um, Port Marnock, which I probably... If I had have um, put a request on the playing it, I probably might have got playing. But to be honest, my game's just not sharp enough, and I don't feel it would be worth going to it. You know, and, and hoping I would rather be going there, sort of fairly prepared and and playing a little bit better. Uh, but as far as uh, the tournaments in Ireland or the Irish region events, as I'm, I think that's going to be starting in the first week of July. So I've got a bit of time now to try and get my game into into some kind of shape. Um, uh, I've sort of freed up a couple of days there where I can I can I can get a bit of practice and 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 get it under a bit of shape, you know. So hopefully, yeah, you you can answer my next question because uh, I would have imagined that you would have to practice rigorously before you you enter a competition. You know, what what is is it? Do you do you go in, intensive tra- uh, practice for two weeks beforehand, or what what is the norm for a competition? Um. Well, that's like well. If you're asking me as a player and only being a player, um, concentrating on playing tournaments, I would have treated my my week as 
nine to five practice. So I would have started at nine o'clock in the morning. I, I would have maybe had a lesson or I would have went and worked on a short game. I would have been working on things that maybe I had been told in a previous lesson. Um, so I was always using that time wisely. And like I would have traveled through Donegal, like I, I would have come up to Ross Pena quite a bit. And the Casey family were always very generous, you know, um, letting me use their facilities up there. So, um, you know, pl places like like, like Ross Pena and stuff like that were great, great places for... Um, you know, you could just go up there for the day and you could spend your day wisely. So you went up and you maybe done a few hours putting. You went and done about an hour's chipping and then you went and had some balls in the rain. So, yeah, it's at the minute now, but to answer your question for me getting the ready for the Pro-Am, I'll just try and maybe hit, a, hit golf balls maybe for a few hours the days that I, that I, that I don't teach. Um, I'll try and maybe get a few nine holes done or a few 18 holes done. And then from that... Um, Hopefully the game will be in some kind of shape to play. And hopefully as you get back now, you, you will be uh, as successful in, in uh, 2021 as you were in 2019. And 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 we you we wish you the best for that and, and uh, continued success. Um, John, I want to come back to you for a second because uh, there's something really exciting going to happen. Um, it's been announced that you will be the host of the Irish Legends this year. Um, it's a number of years since this tournament was played. Um, how did you come about this? Yeah, we have the Irish Legends hosted by Paul McGinley um, in the third week of August. So we, we were very fortunate that the uh, the Legends Tour, actually this what it was called the Stacia Tour at the time when they reached out, they they made contact and, and kind of through a meeting with themselves and Paul, um, they were happy that we would host the event. And it was actually supposed to be on last year but the entire legends tour was, was was postponed as a result of the covid pandemic so we're very fortunate that uh, we're in a position to hold it this year and paul wanted to play it on the old links he, he kind of grew up playing the old links so uh he wanted to play it on that and we're, we're really looking forward to having the the tour come and visit it'll be our kind of first major kind of professional tournament as such we had the irish open qualifier for the terrific irish open that was played in ballet a couple of years ago i think michael played in that and uh, it was a great event, but we're really looking forward to having a kind of a, a three-day event this year and the, the Pro-Am and everything that comes with the uh, the Legends Tour. Now, although Michael is a legend, I think uh, age-wise he mightn't just hit that bracket yet, but that'd be fair. <laughs> I'm a good bit away from that now. Thanks very much for asking about <laughs> It's great to have Paul McGinley um, hosting the, the tournament. Um, how, what's the format for the for the three days? Yeah, so it's they play it now as an alliance format. So there's 60 professionals, and then there's 30 alliance players. So the, the alliance are essentially amateurs that come to, to play in the event. They're kind of part of the series and part of the Legends Tour. So uh, it's two professionals and one amateur on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's no cut, and it's just a low score wins after three days. And they'll have a couple of pro-ams on the Wednesday and Thursday beforehand. They have a, a standard pro-am on the Wednesday, and then they have what they call their celebrity pro-am on the Thursday of tournament week. And there's some celebrities... Uh, seemingly or there's some celebrities signed up to play in that yeah michael isn't it great what what, what are your thoughts on, on uh the uh, rosa penna managing to attract such a great tournament oh it's great it's well it's no surprise to be honest because it's such a wonderful uh facility and and uh setting for for golf courses like you know it's, it's just a beautiful place i i love getting down to it just due to the the situation over the last sort of 12 months or 13 months with covid and stuff it's been very hard and um any golf that i did get played was normally just any any pro arms that were available last year but no it's great for i'm, I'm delighted to see it going there um and as i said as as uh, john said uh we did have the the Irish Open qualifier there back in 2000 and was that 2012 was it 2012 so like it's a phenomenal it's a phenomenal place like you know I love coming there to play and I always seem to play well around it unfortunately I didn't play well for the, the Irish Open qualifier um I had a bit of a nightmare in one hole and it cost me it cost me the qualification but anyway um I still I don't hold any grudges to Ross Penna I still love it <laughs> and I love coming to play it it's probably because you were chipping the ball instead of putting the ball. Isn't that right, John? <laughs> John, you mentioned there, um, and I'd have to tease this one out. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but it, are there any of uh, any names you can maybe sneak out to see? Who can we expect to see on the fairways or celebrities or professionals or names to, to of, of uh, 
stature? I don't, I'm afraid at the minute. Um, obviously, Paul himself will play in the event, but um, in terms of, of who's confirmed, I'm not exactly sure. I know that the Celebrity Pro-Am, and they have, a, they have a, a Legend series as part of the Pro-Am, and they have a Legend series as part of the actual event. So there's there hopefully will be some very high-profile names in, in, in the Legends Tour um, on the actual tour that will make their way to Rasa Ben and play, and also in their, uh, in their Pro-Am. So between the two, I think there'll be some familiar faces that people can uh, come and see and enjoy it. Yeah, and it really is a great showcase for, for you guys, and and the future does really look bright for you. I have this this kind of vision of uh, St Andrews Links type competition where you've got three phenomenal golf courses, and 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 you know the more people that find out about what you can offer, I think you're you're just going down a road that's just just going to get better and better. The tournament runs from the Friday the twentieth of August to Sunday the twenty second. Um, is it will it be open for spectators, John? Uh, I, do, I don't really know at the minute. It's, it's probably looking unlikely. It just really depends on what, what happens in the in the interim with the virus and, and how the Irish Open proper. I'm not really sure. That's, again, a decision for the, the Legends Tour. Um, they'll make it. it I, I really don't know, unfortunately. But hopefully hopefully it's, uh, hopefully it's they can. Some can come and attend, but, but we'll, see. we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, if, if restrictions permit then. But what we can do is we will, certainly from uh, from a radio station point of view, we will keep people um, uh, up to date with, with information there and, uh, you know, uh, come back to us and let us know of any updates that you have going forward. Um, because it's a, it's it would be a great opportunity for people to to uh, to go out and please God the weather uh, is favourable to us over those days um, and, and we can all enjoy... Uh, a, a luxury of, of fantastic golfers um, in, in Donegal. Um, before I, I finish up, uh, John, how do people get in touch with Rosa Pena? What's If they want to book golf, um, what do they need to do? Yeah, so I mean, just really on our website, it's the best option. Um, our website's www.rosapena.ie or alternatively, you can send us an email at golf at rosapena.ie and uh, just give us a call or send us an email and we'd be delighted to have you come and play golf at, at any of the three courses through the summer. And Michael, I have to extend that to you as well. Um, if people are looking for, for a lesson or they go out today and they have an absolute nightmare and they say, I have, to, I have to talk to that man. So how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, you just get me through my Evolve golf coaching page on Facebook um, or if they call the, the driving range here at Letterkenny, um, they'll be able to get my, my details that way. Um, there's there's no there's no issue getting uh, getting in touch. Um, there's no problem through Facebook. I, I always get the messages, so good way to get it. And and a and, and good, good investment in uh, in your golf. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, we've come to uh, we've come to the end. It's it's flown in. Uh, again. I'd like to thank John Casey from Rosa Pena Golf Resort, um, and, and I would like to wish you well over the coming months and weeks. Um, and as you open up St Patrick's and uh, the exciting summer that you have, um, also to Michael McGeady of Evolve uh, Golf Coaching uh, for some great tips. Uh, I'll try them this weekend. And finally, thanks to my sponsors today, Creative Landscaping Works in Letterkenny. Um, they help to create golf courses in your home. Check them out on creativelandscapings.com. From me, Sean Quinn, enjoy your golf and week. And remember, keep it on the fairway. Thank you. Thanks, Sean.